Come here. Come here. <laughs> Hi, it's Dina Zafiris and Lickety Split here. And yes, I'm filthy. I'm filthy dirty. But if I have to change my clothes, um, do my hair, do my makeup, do all that stuff, I will never do videos because I, it's in, impossible. So this is me. This is my dog. This is my dirt. And I ride horses. A lot of people ask why I'm in boots and riding pants and all of that. And it's basically because I'm a horse person as well. So today we're going to talk about one of the biggest mistakes in all of dog training, which is speaking to your dog in a monotone voice. A monotone voice has no tone and it's more of a conversational tone, the tones we use to speak to each other, which is conversational, which tends to be a very monotonous sounding voice. For example, when we speak to a two-year-old, we don't go, hey, how was your day at school? Was it pretty good? Okay, that's awesome. I'm glad to see you had fun at school today. So when you talk to a kid, you are much more sing-songy and have a tonal um, sound to your voice. So you would say, hey, what did you do today? You did, you, you got an A, good job. I'm talking for, you know, young kids, but our dogs are basically the equivalent of a two-year-old. So if you think that when you, you, you sound like, hey, get over here, come on, let's go, what are you doing? Uh, dogs, A, tune you out because 99% of the time when you're speaking in this voice, which is a monotone voice, a conversational tone, 99% of the time you're not talking to your dog unless you're absolutely crazy and you, you sit and you have a conversation with this voice with your dog, which I sometimes do, I have to admit. But the bottom line is for training, guys, for training, um, you want to create tones. And these tones, so how to fix this mistake, the mistake is the monotonous, you know, monotone voice. To fix that mistake, you want to create a sound, a specific tone, or even think of a song for each command. So let's just start with the dog's name. A, if you are always shouting the dog's name, like let's just use Sammy. Sammy, Sammy. It, you know, when you speak in a conversational tone at your dog, it sounds like you're yelling at him or that your tone is not happy. So the first thing you wanna do is think about how, what tone, what song do we play with our voice when we say our dog's name? For example, instead of Sammy, we'd go, Sammy, Sammy, or Sammy, or Sammy. Okay, it sounds really funny, but when you listen to um, how great sheep herding, or watch, I should say, when you watch great sheep herding dogs, they don't even use voice, they use whistles. So it's a flat little whistle, the sheep herder instructor, or, you know, handler wears it around his neck. It's a flat little whistle, and literally he'll go, I mean, it's dramatic tonal training. And so the secret to fix this mistake of not only being boring, but using your voice incorrectly with your dog, um, you can correct that and fix all that by starting to create tones for each command. So for example, um, you know, two syllable names are easier. I always like um, to kind of da-da or da-da or, you know, Samantha, Samantha, Samantha. I mean, it's very rare that you would name your dog Samantha, but the point being is that they recognize, a dog recognizes tones more than he recognizes the word. So why wouldn't you wanna help your dog all you can meaning give him the best chances possible of coming when called, right? So especially with the come command, I tend to tone it up like, Sammy, come, Sammy, come. Now, if you're a man, you're not gonna sound as high as I am, but your song can be the same. Meaning if you go to a piano, there's, you know, every eight notes is a new octave. So if, if, if a female is going, Sammy, come, Sammy, come, and you're a guy, you're gonna sound, Sammy, come, Sammy, come. It, come, it goes up, da, da, da. Da, da, da. So it's the tempo, the sound, and the tone which creates your commands. And people don't think about this. They go, come here, here, Sammy, come on, over here, this way, come, come here. You said 16 different words. No, it should be Sammy, come, Sammy, come, Sammy, come, 
Or if you want to train a different voice, Sammy, come. Sammy, come. And very, very few people do that. You know, people who are really good at this are bird trainers. People who train birds to talk, they're very good at tones. And if you notice, the bird doesn't go, hello, 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 hi. I mean, he just goes, hello, 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 hello. He was taught a certain way with a certain word and he says it that way and he understands it. So if you're trying to train a bird, you don't say the word 15 different tones, you say the same tone. And I know I'm drilling this like you already got what I'm saying, but it's super, super important. So this not only carries over from the name, but it goes, applies to all commands. So I like to say there are three different voices in dog training, three different voices that we use to get our dog's attention. If, again, if you want to sit and have a conversation with your dog, that's fine. Sometimes like, oh, you're so good. You're such a good girl. I love you so much. Sometimes I do talk to her, but it's not my training voice. So when I talk about the three voices that matter to dogs, it's that matter in training. And they're voices that are going to help you with your dog. They're going to help your dog key in to the fact that you're talking to them. So the first voice, well, I'll just name the three voices. We have command voice, correction voice, and praise voice. So those are the three voices when our dog kind of goes like, you talking to me? You know, like, it's like when you take the cookie jar out or the bag of treats, the dog immediately, whoa, I know what that is. And it's not only that it, about that it's food because if you made a different noise every time you took a cookie out, then your dog wouldn't respond that way, right? If I hit a, a glass, my dog wouldn't think it was a cookie coming out. I have to wrinkle the bag, right? He has to hear the bag wrinkling. Why does that work? Because it sounds exactly the same every time I get the bag out. And that's how you want your commands to be. You really wanna think about how you speak. The voice with which you speak and the tone. So there's two different things and we're gonna talk about those now. So you have, with your tones, you have three different voices. Command voice, correction voice, and praise voice. So let's take the first voice, command voice. What's a command? Sit, down, stay, come, heal. If you are gonna say your words like that to the dog, sit, down, stay, come, heal, you sound bop, 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 bop. The dog cannot tell the difference. They're all one syllable words. Sit, down, stay, come, heal. He just hears Morse code. It doesn't make sense to your dog. So instead of saying sit, down, stay, come, heal, my commands sound like this. Up, sit, down, stay. Splitty, come, heal. And if I went to a piano, I could play those tones on the piano, the exact pitch I hit with each of those commands. If you watch people in competitive dog sports, like I said, you can watch sheep herding instructors, you can go out and watch competitive obedience, agility, um, they are really, really into tones. I mean, go watch some, some footage of great, great trainers. Now, at higher level training, you can drop your voice back down again and get a little more monotone or conversational or, you know, serious sounding, um, sit down, but there's still tone to it. There's still a little song behind the tone. So like these shits and trainers that have um, the, their white sleeves on and stuff, they're, um, they'll say, break, get it, and then out, aus, aus. I mean, it's a, it's sound, it doesn't sound like out, drop it, get it. I mean, that sounds too similar. So I really, I know I'm like drilling the point home, but I see very few people using tones with their dog. Tonal training. So your commands, okay, just to give you an idea, if you don't have a way that you say sit, like if you can't answer that, like how do you say sit? If you had to go over to the piano, how would you, you know, sing the, the sit command or the down command? You have to put a lilt in it. So if it's one syllable, like down, I put a little down. Uh, I don't just say down, I say down. And for sit, we do an up sit. So I say up sit, or you could say sit. Sit. I know it sounds weird. 
And then for stay, I want to bring the energy down and I don't want to cause drive or it, what I call a start. I don't want my dog to start towards me when I say stay. So I always do my hand signal, which that's in another video, but I say stay, stay. It goes downward. Stay, not stay. Stay, up, sit, down, get ready, get around, roll over, sitting up, high 10, shake a paw. See, it's all in a very different voice. Sounds like a different language. So not only will your dog key into you, but it'll become much more predictable what your commands are, okay? So those are commands. Commands is a voice that tells the dog, forward, march, ready, okay. It's an exciting voice. Your tone should be happy. I also see people mixing up correction tones with command tones. So when you're telling your dog to sit or asking your dog to sit or lie down, you don't wanna use a correction voice. I hear a lot of people at the first ask, sit, down, stay. It's like, wait, you're yelling at your dog. You're, you're using a correction voice, like a buzzer, <clears throat> to call your dog to come or to tell it to sit. No, it should be a happy tone, right? It's, it's not a praise voice, because we're gonna cover that too, but it's a happy tone, like ready, okay. What a cheerleader would say to begin a cheer. Ready, sit, down. Get ready, heal, stay. It's not sit, sit, sit. <laughs> so that is not the right voice for a command, okay? So it's not only the tone you, you use, but it's the, the, the mood and energy behind your voice as well. So the command voice has to sound like a cheerleader getting ready to cheer, right? Um, I was gonna use a football analogy, but that's a bad idea because I'm not very good at that sport. So I'll probably say something wrong and everybody will be up in arms. So let's leave football out of it. Gosh, I am my shirt. I'm really dirty. I am super dirty. Um, but if I was clean, you wouldn't get the video. So <laughs> I'm gonna stay dirty. Anyway, um, the next voice I wanna talk about is your praise voice. So it is true that um, this is coming from like the top military working dog sergeants because there is a book written and I will I can get the name for you if you want to read it but it's about um, military working dogs and the criteria for like these Navy SEALs the toughest guys in the world the criteria for them to get to have a dog with them to train a dog to go with them on missions the criteria is that they had to squeal like a two-year-old girl they had to be able to praise their dog get them riled up and really praise them like a squealing little girl. Like, whoa, good job, yay! And then get it, you know? So if the military dudes couldn't do that, they didn't get to have a working dog. They didn't get to be a dog team. They had to just go do the regular old Navy stuff. But the SEALs who could get down and play and have a very playful tone and voice with the dog, especially in their praise voice, yeah, good boy! That kind of stuff that makes you sound really stupid and people look at you like, you're weird, you're out in public and you sound like you're, you know, goo goo gaga, and that's right. So, and guys, I'm talking about, you know, when you train your dog, first of all, you should be starting these exercises in the house. So you shouldn't be embarrassed to talk in those cartoony voices. And you probably maybe even do it when you're by yourself. And that's a lot of the reason why it doesn't work when you go outside and then you yell, hey, come here, in this different voice. And, well, that's not the voice you trained him with in the house. So a lot of times it's really hard for the dog to listen just when you're not in your living room because you may be trained in a quiet voice, come, come here, good boy, sit, all right. And then you go outside and you're like, come here. And the dog's like, what's that? You've never tried me with that means. They just hear you yelling. So it's very specific, training is specific. You can't assume your dog speaks English, he doesn't. He doesn't speak English. He's listening to your tone and eventually the shape of the word and the word itself will, by association, they learn what it is, but uh, you know, they don't come out speaking English. So we covered command voice and now we're covering praise voice. You've got to get down there and squeak, okay? So I'm gonna say, splitty sit, <gasps> yes, good dog. Or my yes, my marker word is a different voice than my command, command correction and praise voice. So. You can say that a marker voice 
is a little bit on the command voice side of things. It's very happy, it's very fun, it's short. I try to hit the same note when I say yes. Why do I say yes? It marks the moment the dog does the correct behavior. It's like, a, it, it, it serves the same, same function as a clicker, um, only you can use your voice. Um, I also do clicker training and sometimes I do clicker and voice combined. Yes, I do yes and click at the same time. Sometimes I just use clicker, sometimes I just use voice. And sometimes I don't have my clicker, so it's a good thing that I've marked with my voice. I also think a dog prefers the voice. He loves to hear you say, yes, yes. I mean, you know, um, great athletes, a ballerina takes, she's twirling across the stage and she goes into a leap. And right when she's in the splits, right in the middle of the stage, the, the coach from the audience says, yes. And it just, as an athlete, I mean, um, I was never a ballerina, um, as you can tell by my shape, but uh, I, you know, that moment where the coach goes, yes, and you just, gets you emotionally. If they were just clicking a clicker, I don't think it's that meaningful. So I've always liked to mark with my voice, but they really serve the same purpose. So um, there's going to be another video about marker words because that's also another big mistake. There's a lot of mistakes surrounding marker words. There's a lot of confusion. People use marker words as a release command. I should, you should never do that. Um, so that is another mistake, but I wanna continue here about voices. So if you know what a marker word is and you're using a marker word, it should sound more like your command voice. Splitty sit. Yes. Down. Yes. Yes is also the promise of a treat. So you can't use a marker word unless you're following it with a treat. Otherwise you lose the power of the marker word. The marker should always be followed with a treat. So if you don't have a treat, don't use a marker word. <laughs> um, uh, and that's also another one of my mistakes. I'm giving them all away. So here we go. We're going to talk now about correction voice and people do it all the time. You know, the dog goes over, the puppy goes over to chew the couch and we go, ah, ah, ah. that's great. That's fine. You could go, Hey, or ah, ah. clap. No, ah, stuff like that. Sounds like a growl. By the way, the word no is a pretty universal word. I mean, it's, you know, in German we have nine, but in a lot of languages, it's just no, no, no. Sounds like a growl. It should be guttural and low and long and louder than your normal voice and not happy. Um, so you'll hear people go, don't do that, Sammy. And it, uh, that sounded like a praise tone to me. If Sammy's not doing something right, I go, hey, ah, ah. hey, right? And depending on where you are in your training, it can, you can have a little tab leash, you can give a leash correction, whatever type of correction you're using. Um, I don't like to just use vocal corrections because pretty soon the dog will ignore that as well. So you have to be very careful about <coughs> just scolding your dog. Now, if you have a chihuahua and and eh, eh, that gets him like, oh, mama's mad. Sometimes with a certain dog, voice is enough. It's enough um, to just use vocal. But with most dogs, if you only use vocal to correct your dog, it, it's not going to work. So you have to think about, and that's also for another video, what is your correction? When is it time to use correction? Um, how do we calibrate our correction? And remember, there's a lot of correction. It doesn't mean physical punishment. It can mean a correction. It can mean positive punishment, but it doesn't have to mean positive punishment. You could use reward removal. You could use, you know, negative punishment. I have a tennis ball, the dog is jumping and I don't want him to jump. So I put the tennis ball away. That's reward removal. And it should decrease the likelihood of jumping. So that's negative punishment. Just removing a reward or a treat. So when I say correction or punishment, it doesn't always mean physical correction. So don't get up in arms. I'm not suggesting you have to be, use physical, punishment or positive punishment on your dog. But there are definitely certain certain dogs that they will just tune anything out unless you can give them a physical correction, which again is calibrated for that specific dog um, using Lima or Lima, which is least invasive, minimally aversive. And that is a whole nother conversation. So there's lots of stuff to watch and listen for. So command voice is like a cheerleader. Ready, okay, splitty sit, down, heel, get ready get around, sitting up, shake a paw, take a bow. There, you know, it's very fun, commanding, attention, and you get your tones in there. 
Then when the dog does something right, you have your marker. Yes, happy, commanding. And then you can praise your dog. Good girl, that's a girl. And you don't have to squeak that high. My dogs love it, but you've got to get that cartoony. She love it. Do you love it? So anyway, but you can find your voice. And sometimes it helps if I say like a cartoon voice. Good girl. That's a good girl. Yeah, good girl. And the voice causes her. She's a good girl. That's a silly girl. And you can see the tail going and stuff. It's a, it's a voice that should cause your dog to wag their tail. Thus, it's a praise voice, you know? Then a lot of guys, police dog handlers and stuff, they get in trouble all the time by the people that train their dog because they're too serious. They're too, like, I'm trying to get you on camera. You're so cute, but you're looking over there. What are you looking at? Just a camera. What are you looking at? Um, so, like, um, you keep me over here. I'm going to watch you. Brr. So police dog handlers will get far too serious. You know, they start, sit down, stay, good boy. And then and the dog's just like, you're yelling at me. It doesn't matter that it's this, you know, big, scary Belgian Malinois. Is that the voice is all wrong. So the dog trainer comes in and has to like tweak the policeman and say, you know, your dog's not working for you. He stopped working because you're no fun. You're boring. If you use a monotone voice, you're boring. You're no fun for your dog. So there are three voices in dog training. Command voice, correction voice, and praise voice. There's also a fourth voice, which is your marker, marker word, if you have one. So this video recaps all of that, and I hope you will think about your tones, not only what you say, but how you say it. You should be able to go to the piano and play the notes of your sit command, your down command, your come command, especially your come command. And then go watch some great trainers. Um, you can go to, uh, well, you know, I, I won't name names. You can go Google around and try to find some great, you know, dogs that you think are great with the, with the handlers and listen very carefully to how they say things. And they say their commands the same way every time they say them. You stay consistent. And also think about that your dogs do not speak English, so you have to take the time to teach them words, right? You take the time to use reinforcement and teach them words, but think about how you're saying it. I'll ask someone, what is your dog's come? They'll call me on the phone. Say, Dina, I can't, my dog will not come when I call it. Okay. What's your come command? And they go, there's like a crickets. And I go, hello, what's your come command? And they go, I, 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 I say like, uh, come here, come, come here. And I say, okay, you say, come here. So if the dog was like 50 feet away, you'd say, come here. And then they go, no, well, then I would say, come, come. And then I, and then I, okay, all right. That's already a problem. You know what I mean? He had to think about, I mean, if somebody says, what's your come command? I go, splitty come. That's my come command. It's horrible. My neighbors hate me. Do you know what I mean? Like it's that loud. I train her with that voice so that when I scream it, cause she's really far away, a, she hears it, B, she knows what it is, and C, it works, okay? So then I'll show up at this person's house and I'll say, show me your, let me see your come command. So I take the dog away, you know, walk a little bit down the yard. Okay, call your dog to come. And they go, come here, come here, come here. Sammy, Sammy, come here, this way, over here, over here. Come on, here boy, come boy. Got I just said, you just said 14 words. You just said 14 different words. <laughs> that is not a come command. You said 14 different words. Your come command is like, Sammy, come. Sammy, come. Sammy, come. That's it. You can't change it. You don't then go, come here. Come on. Come on. Over here. This way. Come on. Right now. Right now. I mean, that's ridiculous. Do you know what I mean? And if that rings a bell for you, you got to go back. You gotta go back into your house, get a handful of treats, and train your come command with a sound and a tone as if your voice was a whistle or a bell or a piano. And I wanna say all great trainers do this, okay? Um, it's important. And listen to how animals communicate. They communicate with tones because they don't have words. And that bird was just singing behind me. They don't talk, but they sing. They sing songs and those songs are tones that other birds recognize as mating calls and things like that. Even look at horses. 
<laughs> you know, they have tones. They don't go, hey, what's going on today? Yet we want to speak to our dog in words, right? So think about how animals communicate, period, and add that in to your toolbox, okay? So this is mistake. I think we're on mistake number five. I've done one every day, okay? If you haven't watched mistake one through four, go back and do so. It's on my channel. It's absolutely free information. Listen to it as a podcast. If you don't want to look at my face, I understand. But put your ear pods in and listen to it. Okay? It's a lot better than Fox News or CNN, um, in my opinion. But um, so, you guys, I want, I want to encourage you to go look at my TikTok so that you can see some of my dog uh, work that I do, some of my dog dancing, my dog training, and all of that. I also have um, two websites. One is dinazafiris.com and the other is inspiredbydogswithdina.com. And then um, I also have dogsdetectcancer.org so you can see some of my cancer sniffing dog work there. Uh, I've been around for a long time, been a trainer over 30 years, and I do have an online training program for people who want to become dog trainers. So if that interests you, you want to go to inspiredbydogswithdina.com subscribe to my mailing list and you will get the 10 biggest secrets of all dog training. And I'm sure tonal training is on there because it's a big one. And uh, that's a really good start. So for anybody who wants to become a dog trainer, I do offer a certification. Um, I'm having a whole group of students come in October to my um, 15 acre ranch here in South Carolina and where we're doing their certifications and tests um, for whatever that means to you and uh, you can add it to your toolbox as a trainer. And I think charge a lot more for your services. And um, I also coach people on their business and how to charge high-end prices. So um, when I was in LA, uh, I was charging a lot of money for my dog lessons. So it was a little bit about being in that location, but I think if you're educated and you've worked with a mentor, I provide a mentorship program, so I'm always there for you as a trainer. You can ask me questions. If you're stuck and you don't know what to do with a dog, you can call me, we can do Zoom, and it's a really cool program. So if you're interested in that, go to Dogs to Tech Camp, uh, go to uh, Inspired by Dogs with Dina, D-I-N-A, Inspired by Dogs with an S, Inspired by Dogs with Dina dot com, and that's D-I-N-A, and um, click on the Essential Skills and Games class, that is my a class for dog trainers. And um, it's gone really well. This has been the first year of my online training program and people are loving it. Um, I've got two Facebook pages that one is private and we use it only for the people who are in my course, my online training course. It's not only an online training course, I do in-person mentoring once a week with my client, with my students. So lots of fun stuff. I will be back tomorrow with the next mistake. My video is getting long, so I'm gonna cut it short here. Splitty say goodbye. See how she ignores me? Now watch. Spitty. Spitty, come. Yeah, was that your voice? So, you know, they don't listen to voice unless it has a tone. Or if it's a cookie bag. Come here. Oh, my goodness. I love her. Oh, she gets so bored during these videos. It's just so boring. <laughs> oh. That was a mistake. I always say don't hug your dog. <laughs> I hug my dogs. The owner can hug their own dog, but you know your dog. Do not let other people hug your dog. Do not let kids hug your dog. It's a very, very bad idea. To this day, I see putting people putting their babies on top of dogs. Very, very bad idea. Whether it's a chihuahua or a pit bull, don't ever do it. Oh, by the way, I have a dog coming to stay with me. Actually, I have three dogs coming, and he is a resource guarder, so we are going to be desensitizing him using DSCC, desensitization and counter conditioning, to make other dogs a fun thing. He's going to see other dogs when he's eating, and he's going to love it because of the kind of training we're doing. So I'm going to... Oh, yeah, that's so cute. Look at the dog. Oh, she's cute. Eee, so cute. <laughs> Mommy loves you so much. Oh, so me that dog to be in school. Okay, that's my little baby dog voice. See, and that voice is not really a command correction or a praise voice. It's just a ooey gooey dooey voice because, you know, sometimes I do talk to my dog, but it's not my training voice, okay, or my correction voice. 
So lots of stuff going on. I'm going to be filming a very big pit bull mix named Henry who resource guards. I'm going to video the whole thing. I'm going to put it up here on the YouTube channel so you can see how I desensitize and counter condition a very aggressive dog who resource guards his food, toys, and whatnot. So that's going to be a really fun thing too. Okay. Happy training. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.